Sport 2 or Laser Master 3 right here. Did an assembly video on it here a little while back. What I'm going to show you today, and this is going to be a somewhat short video, are some modifications I made and some little additions and something I am more or less trying to invent for this one coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop, and in this video on the Ortur Laser Master 3, I'm not actually going to be running the laser. I'm going to show you a few things that I did to uh, make it better for my use. Because if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know I just can't seem to leave anything alone. I have to mess with it. And, of course, I had to mess with this. The very first thing I did was I put a, a baseboard. I like to have my lasers on a baseboard, and I like to burn a layout grid on them so that I can quickly lay out a project without having to look for center and try to get things square and do all that kind of mess around. I'll show you how this works in a minute. I'll also tell you where to get this grid. It's absolutely free. It can be downloaded from Thingiverse. So let me bring you in close here. I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about with the grid, and then I'll tell you where to get it. Okay, this layout grid right here. It's 400 millimeters square, and each square is 10 millimeters. That's a centimeter for you that are metrically challenged and it's numbered and there are some circles here there is a square in here as well that I added for something that I use uh, actually it's for ceramic tiles but this is available on Thingiverse and if you go and look for a layout grid for an Ortura Laser Master 2 you will find this grid along with some mounting feet that will not work with this don't even bother using to try to 3D print those because uh, Laser Master 2 has got a completely different mount. And I'll show you what I did on mine here in a minute. But this uh, grid was created by uh, Buster Beagle 3D and I have used it on several different lasers. 400 millimeter square, it's very accurate. You can run it from Laser Gerbil or you can run the G-code from Lightburn which is what I did on this one. I ran the G-code from Lightburn. Very simple setup and it just works and there was no reason for me to create a new grid for a 400 millimeter square when somebody had already done it. And there'll be a link in the description on where you can get that file. Okay, so now I'll talk about my mounts. Uh, these mounts I designed and printed on 3D printer and there's two different styles, uh, although all four could be made the same as long as you make them the same as this style. You see there's a little bit of relief here on this that faces the outside on both sides here. That is to allow for a couple of mounting screws which are next to the feet. The feet fit perfectly into these holes. These are, this is a style I used on the front, right there. And my intent is to make risers and I have a few different prototypes here I've been playing with. Uh, this is a 50 millimeter square one here and the idea is it will fit into that and you will be able to stack them as you wish. And I have another design that is also 50 millimeter. I've been playing with a few different ones here. So there's one there in green. Of course, I've got it backwards with the recess the wrong way. Turn that back around. And I'll, in the future, I'll be making them all with the recess because although you don't need it on the front, or if you want to get a little bit more fancy looking, you can go with a silk finish. But then the intent is to, well, it's already got a base on it. I can stack these up and make that as tall as I want. I've just got to get my stability issues figured out. That's why we have these four holes here. I've been experimenting with some with pegs. This particular one here has pegs, uh, pegs on it, which will, which makes it a little bit more sturdy. As you can see, that's a little sturdier, and I'll probably be going with the pegs. Um, may make some different height ones. Uh, still a work in progress. And I can't really use them yet because I only have three made, and all three are different. Okay, what's nice about having this mount on here is, as, as you can see, I've got the laser off of here, and there's my layout board. If I need to take this off for some reason, take it somewhere, or put risers on it or whatever, when I pick this up and set it back on here, It'll be in the same place every time, and there is no wiggle to it whatsoever. It's always back in the same place, so my layouts will always be the same. Another thing I've added here is air assist. 
One of the nice things about this is air assist is, at least the nozzle is built in. It's a port right here you can plug your tube into and you can dress your tube along and let it follow up and comes with a little air valve so you can adjust your airflow. And right here I've got the uh, airflow pump and these are very quiet. I'm going to turn it on full blast. There it's all the way up full blast and I'll get kind of close to it here. That's all the hum you're going to hear out of it and that's with my head right by it. So it's a very quiet pump, not like some I've had that just rattle all over the place. And it has an adjustable speed mount on it so you can adjust your speed up and down. Between the speed control and the valve, you actually don't need one or the other, but I've got them both in there, mainly because I needed a coupler for the hose and that was handy. Okay, another thing I've added, and it's more for aesthetics than anything else, because the cable did not get in the way. It's not like I needed a drag chain for this. Uh, I added these mounting bases to the side of the laser here, and they are drilled and tapped with uh, flathead 632 by quarter inch machine screws. And right here is what these are. These are called wire tie mounting bases wire tie adhesive back mounting bases. To us electricians we call them sticky backs. You peel off this paper from the back, there's some adhesive on there, and we also call them peel and stick for a while because they won't stay stuck. They'll eventually, the adhesive will get brittle and they'll fall off. That's why there is a flathead mounting hole in the center, made perfectly for a 632 screw. It's exactly what I did here. Then three tie wraps. Tie wraps is a mounting term, or a brand name term, I should say, for a wire tie. We call these tie wraps, another electrician term. So there's an idea for you if you're concerned about your cable just laying out here. I haven't had any problems with it getting into the work area. I just wanted to dress it up a little bit. So there's just a quick video on some of the mods I've made and uh, the mountings. And no, you can't have the STLs of this yet because they are not perfected and they don't fit as well as I would like them to yet because although they go right together they don't always come apart real easy. Maybe that's a good thing. But this is still a work in progress along with some other sizes and as I said I've only got three made so if I had the fourth one made we'd be putting the honeycomb bed on here and I'd be doing some cutting to uh, demonstrate that because right now if I put the honeycomb bed on I don't have enough room for my laser. It's that close to the base, and there's a reason for that. If you crank this thing up high speed and it's not close to the base, it's going to wobble all over the place. So obviously when you raise it up 50, 100 millimeter or whatever, to, for example, to use a rotary, you're not going to be running at 20,000 millimeters per minute. Of course, you shouldn't be doing that anyway on a rotary, but kind of give you an idea. So I just wanted to show the additions I made, the layout grid, where you can get it. It's very simple to make. Uh, my mounting board here is 24 by 26 inches. Uh, it's half inch MDF. Reason is 24 by 26. It's because there was a piece like that laying here in the shop and I have to cut it. It could be a little bit less than that. It could be a little bit more than that. Depends on what you want to do. If you want to put it in enclosure or whatever. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. There'll be links in the description on where to get the air assist pump. Of course the laser, this particular one was provided to me by Artur. But I have to mess with stuff, I always got to add stuff on. And eventually when I get this perfected I'll make the uh, STLs available for this for those of you that have 3D printers. And if, see I got it stuck again. And if you don't have a 3D printer, I will make these available for purchase. So, thanks for watching, I'm Roger in the shop, we'll see you on the next one.